I'll talk to him about it. I'm sure he's seen it. It's one of those AMC channels. Oh, sure, talking about movies. Hey, Frank, Gene's, Gene has a question for you. No, well, actually, uh, I, uh, yeah, I do. Actually, I watched the movie last night. That, oh, I do have a question. I'll make it interesting. I watched The Black Cat last night. It was, it was um, made in 1934, and it had two big horror movie stars in it. C if I'll say one of them. Bella Lugosi played a part, and who was the other cast member? Uh, that's so easy. I was thinking that really stumped me. That was Boris Karloff. You got it, buddy. It was he a. It was one of the biographers of Bela Lugosi. Oh, really? <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I mean that. Uh, I knew the answer to that when I was 11 years old. That's. I mean, that's, that, that, there's there's only a handful of Lugosi Karloff co-stars. Uh, it was great to see the both of, both of them on the screen at the same time. Yes, and it's uh, that's one of my favorite movies, and uh, it's so good to see Bela Lugosi get a get a. Uh, a role a bit outside his stereotype, and uh, you know it's a very fine movie. And if you watch it closely, you can see they had to tone it down a bit. And there's some uh, there's some little parts missing here and there that uh, don't give so much give it a discontinuity and eccentricity. So I really like that movie, and I, I love the finale. So I'm glad you were watching it. Oh, I'm glad I watched it too. It was only an hour and fifteen minutes around. It was a short. No, let me. Uh, I don't know how much time we have, Joe. But, uh, the we have eight uh, seven minutes. Okay, let me just take a bit on the black cat. Think of it as a almost accidental biography of Bela Lugosi. Ooh. He, he left Hungary in uh, 1918, 1919, came back 15, uh, and this is 15 years after that. He left behind in Hungary a child bride who he loved dearly but never saw again. Wow. And in the movie, when he goes back, which he never did in real life, yes. the evils of the modern world are personified by his rival, Boris Karloff. Right. So, uh, it, it, if you, it, and Lugosi was in World War I. He was, uh, he was wounded in World War I. World War I was a terrible experience for him. Wow. So, uh, there's, there's a lot of autobiographical things in this film that I think were quite unintentional, but that's, that's the way it evolved. You don't think they might have looked at his life and said, oh, this might be... Art reflecting life? No, I don't think so. Uh, he was added to the cast rather late, hmm. and uh, the 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 director had other things in mind. I mean, what he what he was intending to do with the movie uh, uh, was pretty well documented. But the uh, but the parallels of his life are, are just unmistakable. And and when Lugosi were at the end of the film, when Lugosi rips away the shroud and sees the the young woman's body, who is his daughter, but also identical woman to his wife, he screams, and that's uh, that's from the depths of the man. So, mm -hmm. no, I don't think it was intentional, and I think that's one of the reasons that it is, in a sense, so mysterious, because I think it just happened. Mm -hmm. Whether he realized it or not, I, I don't know, but uh, you can go on and on about the depth in that movie. Okay, now, who was the author or the uh, the person that gave that movie the idea? Well, uh, that was Edgar Yomer, Omer. One of the, uh, well, I guess he's, I can't call him unsung now. Now He's getting, he's getting uh, the, the recognition he, he deserves. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he kind of fell afoul of the uh, Hollywood s system. So he did, after this, I think this was the last movie he made for a big Hollywood studio. And even that was one of the smaller ones. But he, was, he was, didn't belong in the system, and he wasn't, wouldn't have been happy there. He was kind of a maverick. And yeah. He, uh, he co-authored the script, and he brought a lot of things into it. I'd, I'd have to go back and read all the details, because it is so intricate, but, yeah. but there's a lot of his personal relationships and family relationships in the, uh, in the, in the, amongst the characters in the film. Four and a half minutes. Po okay, po I better get to the movie at hand. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Which, uh, quite honestly, I don't have a lot to say about it. It's to all my friends on shore, Bill Cosby movie of 1972. And Bill Cosby is 35 years old. Wow. He's had some fame. He's already had two television series, I Spy and then the, the Bill Cosby show. Oh, he had three. He had one before the Bill Cosby show. Yeah, it was oh, I Spy. COS. COS, okay. You got me, Joe. I, 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 Buzzy Linhart was in this short-lived um, one-year or half-a-year uh, Cosby show. Okay, you got me. Okay, and anyway, this movie, and this is, uh, this is not a funny movie, and we tend to, tend to think of uh, 
Bill Crosby now is in two ways, as a, as a funny stand-up guy, which he was then and is now, and as kind of an older statesman who has developed a lot of wisdom over the years. But he was, uh, he had an angry young man period, and I won't say he's angry in this movie, he's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a, a sad movie in a sense, but, he, uh, but he's very good in it. And when I saw this movie, I forgot how good of a dramatic actor he could be. He didn't do a lot of these straight dramatic parts, but when, uh, you know, outside of his TV series, now, does this have the great Gloria Foster? This has the great Gloria Foster. I know you're a big Matrix fan. I love her. And if you want to do a little homage to her, I'll just shut up and let you do it. This is years before she became... I, I, I guess you think of Gloria Foster because of the Oracle in the Matrix movies, right? Oh, yeah. I just thought oh, that they yeah. found this tremendous woman with real dominance and real savoir-faire. She was calm but she was commanding like mm -hmm. a good machine should be mm -hmm. yeah i think she is uh I, for me she was the most memorable thing about the movie i'm not a super big i'm not as big a fan of the matrix movies as you are but oh, she, I, I thought she was dynamite and her replacement worked with her on broadway so that was a very nice touch when she died yeah. of diabetes uh during the second movie mm -hmm. she didn't even finish her parts in the second movie really yeah in that young Aaliyah movie, uh, woman, that, that rock singer, was going to be in the movie, and she was replaced by Marvin Gaye's daughter mm -hmm. because she died. So they had two deaths during the uh, second Matrix. Well, Joe, when, if you ever show the Matrix, you don't have to call me because you know a lot more about it than I do. We'll still chat about it, but it's great that this is early Gloria Foster for you Matrix fans. Yeah, and, it, uh, and it's good you say that because it's a good chance you won't recognize her because, you know, given her makeup in the, in the uh, Matrix films, you might not recognize her anyway. Uh, she worked. She tended to cross paths with, with Cosby a lot, and I don't know if that's because they were friends or because they were just uh, you know so, so few black actors that you know made made it that they they would have to cross paths. But she she pops up in I Spy. She pops up in the in the Cosby Show, and she pops up in the in the disastrous movie he made, Leonard Part Six, which you know was an embarrassment to everybody. And uh, so yeah, I guess they knew each other. And this is made in an era when there's a lot of social dramas becoming television movies. You know, we tend to think of, of that kind of stuff as, as a bunch of fluff, but late 60s, early 70s, you know, the Vietnam War, the, uh, the rise of the counterculture, and there's a lot of movies on TV that are, that are looking at the dark sides of life. And I, and I don't like giving away plots to people on this show, but I've got to tell you, because I would want something to do with me, there's a kid in here who gets sick, and, I, and when I see a sick a sick kid, I don't like going to movies where the, the mother gets terminally ill or the, the kid gets <laughs> sick, but this is a sickle cell anemia, which is a, oh. a disease which uh, yeah. afflicts mainly blacks, Right. and Bill Cosby is a working class guy carrying... 45 seconds. Five seconds? 45 seconds. Movie. It, it's surprising, it's, it's, it's sad, but it's surprisingly upbeat, and I think Bill Cosby steals the show. Wow. Is that my five seconds? No, 45 seconds. Yeah, now we got 30. 45 seconds. Okay. okay. 30 seconds. But Bill Cosby steals the show. Gloria Foster is in it. Yeah, she's fine. She's, she's not in it. I mean, she's good when she's in it, but it's not a, it's not a big part. I mean, Cosby, Cosby and his, is definitely the centerpiece, and Cosby and his son, I think it's fair to say, have most of the big scenes. It's him really, you know, he's... He's, he's got a dream. He wants to buy this house. He's saving every nickel he can. And as the Oracle says in the Matrix, our time is up tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. Okay.